Okay, so hello again. Um, so last time we finished essentially section two and then we started with section three, which is about sorting. Uh, but there were, there were some questions in the chat, uh, which I will try to respond while making some, some brief review of what I said last time. And the, uh, first there were some questions about the, the 1D range counting problem, uh, which were very justified because uh, there were some problems on, on the slide. So we have fixed this and now let me, let me come to this again. I, I mean, uh, I didn't want to do too much of section two again, but uh, okay. So, so the, the problem of counting was that you are given an, an ordered area and want to count the elements between, uh, between two given uh, elements, uh, X and X prime. Okay. So, and uh, we discussed, we discussed uh, our algorithms for areas. And then I introduced this structure of, of a search tree or, or balanced binary tree or whatever. Okay, and then uh, the reason for doing this was that I tried to explain that counting elements in an interval of, uh, of or a binary tree can be done faster. Okay, it can be done uh, a logarithmic, logarithmic time. And essentially as fast as the, 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 the range two but there were some there are some advantages of using this data structure. I don't want to, to say too much about this because we are going to talk about this data structure in section four in more detail. So you will see, for instance, that modifying this data structure is more efficient than modifying areas like inserting elements in the set. Okay, so I, I'll, there, there are some advantages to using this binary tree. And uh, I, so in order this to be efficient, I, I said, you need that. No. You need that the the distance of the of the terminal nodes which contain the the sorted area elements from the parent node is approximately equal. Okay, it cannot on it cannot be exactly equal unless the number of elements is a power of two, which is very inconvenient restriction. So, but. For, for example, it would be optimal if the difference is if the difference is a small sum. For example, 17 has distance one, two, three from the parent, and 26 has distance one, two, three, four. But all elements have only distance three or four. Okay, and in this uh, in, in this sense, uh, you you call this you call this sometimes a balanced a, a balanced tree. Okay, so the, uh, the the searching algorithm is efficient when when the tree is balanced. And uh, we have confused this a little bit last time. So I, I, I try to separate uh, between the counting, which is, which is here. So uh, the, the, in the counting problem, you're given two elements x and x prime, and you want to count only the number of m so that x m is between x and x prime, where x prime is included and x is not. OK, and you, let, me, let me call this number k, OK? and uh, in order to do this efficiently on uh, on on a binary tree, uh, what what you, you need to record extra information in the in the in in this non-terminal node, okay? And uh, what 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 you should write in this non-terminal node, so in this yellow circle, is the number of elements which are below, okay? Plus now this is, we haven't written this here, but uh, I said this last time and I repeat, you, you should also add information, what is the smallest and largest element. So what, sh what should stand in this uh, yellow circle uh, now is the number of elements below, which in this case is two. So the, the, the cardinality of the set six and eight, so this is two. And smallest element six, largest element eight. And this has to be done for every, for every node. Okay, so for example, this node has six elements below it. And so you, you have to write this number six, so which is this plus information about the smallest and largest elements, so in this case, one and seven, six. 
And you have to do this now for all these nodes. And when you do this, then you can you can count elements uh, efficiently. So for for the time being, you I mean, think about it if you do not see it. In this way, the memory consumption is still proportional to the number of 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 uh, the of the list. So the number of elements in the array. So the memory consumption is all of n. Uh, let me now not explain this. In detail, I mean, if you do not see it, then it is a good exercise for you to think about it. Why? Okay. So the memory consumption is O of n. Uh, the the pre-processing of this tree is O of n times log of n. Uh, it is essentially the complexity of of let's say of of some efficient sorting algorithm. But this piece, okay, this this information here is I didn't explain this in in detail. And we will return to this problem later. Okay, so I did not explain how how you generate this uh, this um, this binary tree from 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 uh, from, from an array. But uh, okay, so uh, and uh, so the depth of the, the the tree is logarithmic if you assume that the tree is balanced. Okay, so then it's a distance of nodes from the from the from the top is approximately approximately equal so of the list from the top is approximately equal. Then the depth of this array is approx is, is logarithmic. So this is for for a balanced tree, and uh, um, the the runtime the runtime of uh, of the algorithm is is log of n, uh, namely what. So what what you can what what this algorithm does is whenever you're given x and x prime, you can determine where does where does x and x prime lie in this in this binary tree, and you can decompose this interval into a number of now let's see do we have this here. Um, You can decompose this interval. Now we had this last time, but uh, it seems like it, it it went away. So you can decompose. Uh, I can do. I can draw this by myself now. So let's see. Um, okay. Uh, let let me use blue. Uh, when when this is x, okay, and here is x prime, then you can decompose this interval. Uh, excluding x but including x prime, so you can decompose this as um, as a union of as a union of these nodes. Okay, I think these were the nodes which are on the slide last time, so we have taken this away. But uh, so whenever you're given x and x prime. You can decompose this set the, the, of elements which are between x and x prime into the union of the sets which correspond to some 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 uh, some nodes written in uh, in in blue. And since x prime is here, so x prime this is included, but x which is fixed is not included. This why it is not it is not the node. It is not this node, but only this piece. Okay, so and this this node now stands for these three elements: 12, 14, 17. This node stands for the element 26, 35, and 41, and 8. So this interval in this case is decomposed as the 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 union this joint union of interval corresponding to four nodes. Okay, and you can determine these nodes in logarithmic time, and the number of nodes is also logarithmic. Okay, and now uh, once once you have these nodes. Then you can simply add the numbers which correspond to this node, and you will determine the number k. This is why the the, the runtime, the runtime of this algorithm is logarithmic. Okay, so I did not write. I mean, I said it is not. We have not written this in pseudo code how you determine these nodes. Okay, but this is an exercise where if you understand this properly, you should be able to write the pseudo code. Okay, how how to get this blue node. So this is uh, this is what happens if you want to to, to count the elements. And then uh, there were some there, there were some questions like, um, 
why why don't we store the information in the in the list? Okay, now uh, let me emphasize this one more time. Uh, I mean, if you have if you have this kind of set and you want to to process it via the list, you always need to iterate over the list in the set, which is which is uh, which is proportional to this number k, and this number k can be an, a, a non cost I mean a non-zero multiple of n in general. So this means the com the complexity of everything which iterates over the list will be at least the uh, proportional to k, which in principle should be all of n. Okay, and you cannot achieve all of log of n, so you cannot achieve any fast algorithm by iterating over the list. This is the reason why you need to store information about this list in the in the nodes above them. So of course this is some uh, this is some extraneous memory. Okay, you 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 store information multiple times. This number twelve now, okay, is somehow contained also here and here. Okay. But uh, I mean, that's the price. So you augment the memory a little bit, but you make the searching faster. <laughs> so, okay, this is the, 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 the idea of the, of the counting. And now uh, we said we can modify this, okay, by not, not uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, now you see that the, the, the sharp here disappears. You can modify this algorithm to to do the to determine the set itself, not only the number of its elements, but the set itself. Okay, and now uh, then, if you want to do this efficiently, then you need to store in every node not only the number of elements but the whole set. Again, again with the indication of smallest and largest elements. Okay, and the preprocessing is the same, the depth is the same. Uh, <laughs> But so what happens if what happens for the runtime? You can again decompose this set as a, as a union of the sets which correspond to this blue node. And the number of these sets is logarithmic. Okay? But uh, we have to agree of how we count the the, the taking the union. If you uh, in this uh, in this count here, you take uh, the union of one element as uh, as one complexity one. And then if you have k elements in the set, then you need at least complexity k to, be, to build this union. But everything until taking the unions have complexity log of n. It's only this, this union building that gives you this, this extra k here. Okay? So otherwise, uh, it, it's more or less the same. So, uh, however, uh, one difference is that now uh, the memory consumption increases. Okay, and this is what this is what was on the on the slide last time. So uh, what was on the slide was basically this. Now you you need to store not in every node not only the number of elements but the whole set of elements. And now every element, for example, this fourteen occurs in every node above. Okay, so every every uh, every element occurs as many times as this distance from the parent, which is something uh, which is the, the depth of the tree, which is logarithmic, this is why the, the memory consumption now increases. So you, you, you can do this, but uh, with, with m memory consumptions n time, n times log of n. Okay, so this is now uh, the, 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 the two versions of the 1D. So the 1D range searching and the 1D range counting. And then I said, okay, uh, I tried to explain how to do this for for uh, <coughs> for 2D. So I said that one of the advantages of this binary tree is that you can iterate it. So then you can do this not only for for uh, for let's say uh, uh, elements in an ordered set X, but uh, in, for pairs of elements in ordered set X and Y. Okay, and you you are interested in you're interested in in uh, pairs which lie in a given rectangle, if you want to. Okay, and th the idea is to use a binary tree with respect to x, whose nodes themselves are binary trees with respect to y. Okay, so <laughs> instead of uh, instead of having now uh, this, uh, so the content of this this uh, uh, this red circle uh, is that you replace 
these themselves by trees with respect to the other component. And in the leaves of this, uh, of this Y tree, now stand the, stand the pair. Okay, I mean, you do not forget, you do not forget the X component when you sort it according to the Y component. Okay, but, uh, uh, but you have, uh, you have this recursive structure. And now uh, the, if you, if you want to, uh, <coughs> so now, now think about it. If you, if you uh, store the number uh, in, uh, in so if you if you build this kind of a binary tree, you will have you will have uh, n times log of n consumption, and the runtime you will need the log of n iterations for each dimension. So you need a log of n iterations to split this set with responding to x variable, and then to determine this this uh, this uh, blue uh, set. And now every in every blue circle contains a tree with respect to y. And to to locate uh, the the elements whose second component lies between y and y prime, you would need to descend in these trees one more time, and this will give you another logarithmic factor. Okay, so the runtime of of counting in this way will be uh, will be uh, log squared of n. Okay, now let's see, maybe uh, um, <laughs> so. What what happens is now uh, I mean it's not it's not optimal to to uh, but there is not not enough space anyway so let me see if I can do this. Uh, <coughs> so what you do is you have a rectangle and the first thing that you do is you break it up uh, into let's say into with respect to x where every Every interval of this sort here corresponds to one of these blue nodes. Okay, and then uh, in each blue node now there is a Y tree. So you 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 break up this this rectangle between the uh, the the purple lines uh, into pieces like that. Okay, which are which are pieces with uh, which are pieces that you determine from the Y tree, which is in the in this uh, blue circle. Okay, and now you do this for every interval and. The, the number of divisions, horizontal and vertical, is logarithmic. And then you have log squared okay, of this kind of uh, rectangles over which you, you, you sum the number of elements, okay, which, which is in the rectangle. So you have log squared. Uh, it is not necessary that these divisions are the same, are the same for different x intervals. Okay? This is not necessary, and this does not, but this does not change the, the complexity of the of the of the logarithm of the of the algorithm, uh, essentially. Okay, so, <laughs> but you have uh, these rectangles now. Uh, the small rectangles they are all log squared many, and then this uh, you will give you complexity log squared. Okay, this is <laughs> this is where you get uh, this is where you get this complexity. So, <laughs> this is for for counting, uh, and if you want to. If you want to uh, determine the set again, so this is a two, two D searching algorithm. Then you have to store all the elements again, and then this will cost you another lock of another lock of uh, uh, another lock factor of memory, and the runtime will be the same, except that you again get this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, plus k. Which comes from simply building the union here. Okay, now uh, in in the in the searching problem there is no there is no sharp. So this is one of the few things that we failed to correct. So now <laughs> there is no sharp. So you you're interested now in in the in the uh, so in the set of elements. So this is now contained in n cross n. Okay, uh, contained. Uh, <laughs> So this now contained in n, or, or yeah, or contained in in one comma n. So maybe I'll try this. Way. This is now contained in one capital n. <laughs> so and then uh, then so you can modify these algorithms and uh, for 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 counting and for the set of indices, and you can do this now uh, in high dimension as well. And uh, okay. So this is this is what I I, I I said to to say about the the 
the, the two dimensional, uh, okay, the, 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 the search three algorithms. Okay, now I, I get out and we go back to, uh, we go back to section three where we, where we started last time. So, Okay, so we are talking about sorting. And I do, I don't want now to, uh, to repeat again uh, to the various uh, sorting algorithms. So this is, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with them several times. Uh, so, and we discussed, uh, so the, the, the goal of sorting was uh, if you, If you are, are given them an, an, an array, change the elements in the array so that they are sorted. And I said, usually I will not output the permutation pi. Okay, so there was a question in the chat, what is pi? Pi is a permutation. Okay, so this is a map from one comma n to one comma n. And uh, uh, if you take the permuted permuted array with the permuted indices, then it should satisfy this, uh, this inequality. But usually I will not output the pi itself, we will simply output the permuted array, and this will be enough. And uh, so then, and then we talked about uh, several ideas of how to accomplish this. And I remind you that we haven't fixed this here yet, but to remind you that every time you encounter this rectangle, imagine that here stands the symbol for natural number. Okay. So <laughs> the uh, one of the ideas uh, of of uh, of uh, of uh, for sorting was this bubble sort, uh, and uh, the the idea uh, <coughs> the idea for uh, the idea of this uh, of this uh, sorting was <coughs> that you choose. You always compare two neighbor elements and move the higher one to the right. Okay, and if you if you go, uh, so this is what is what is done in in this um, in this inner loop over k. Okay, and at the end, the 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 the, uh, the elements with index a small m will be will be correctly sorted like here. Okay, so what is this black boxes are previous previously sorted elements of the sort x m, and then you decrease m. Okay. And continue doing this. So this, the first iteration will choose the the largest element to to the right. The second iteration will choose the largest among the other elements again to the right, etc. And uh, okay, in the end, when you come to two, then uh, this will have sorted the end. So th the reason this is called bubble sort is that because uh, is that bubbles go up. Okay. So uh, this is uh, <coughs> this is. Uh, <coughs> This, is, this was the idea of the bubble stuff. And uh, it is easy to see that this was correct and the runtime is quadratic. And then uh, we discussed two similar uh, ideas. So the one was the, the select sort. Okay, and what, what the, the, the select sort does is <coughs> over some piece of the area which is not yet sorted, it records in this variable mean the, the index of the smallest encountered element. Okay, and at the end, after you go, uh, you, you go until the end, then you, it swaps the XM with X mean. Okay, so what you see in this iteration is the yellow ones are the, the already sorted element. The, 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 the red ones are X mean, and the blue one is the, is the XK, which you iterate here from, from, uh, from, from M to N. And at the end, when you see this, this double error, this means that the, the content of the element is exchanged. And after this exchange is made, then you know that XM is the smallest among all the elements between XM and X capital M. And when you do this from M to, from, from M upward to capital N minus one, then you know that the is sort. Okay, now the, there was this question uh, in the, in the chat last time, 
if the insert sub similar with bubble sort, but uh, you start now, uh, you, you start from from the from the left and not from the right. Now, okay, the the idea of the select sort and the bubble sort is not exactly the same. Okay, there are slightly different ideas, and the difference between left and right, I should emphasize this, is not really significant. I mean, you can, whenever you have an algorithm which sorts from the left, you can very easily construct an equivalent algorithm which sorts from the right and the other way around. So basically, whether we choose to sort from left to right or from right to left is only a technical problem. This, the algorithms will be equivalent and they will have the same complexity. Okay, so <clears throat> Uh, whether especially the direction in which you sort is more or less a question of taste, if you want. Okay, but in the case of bubble sort, you sort you sort it from right to left because the bubbles go up, and you first want the the highest element to to be on the top. Okay? Otherwise, you you can call it I don't know you stone sorting or whatever because the stones go down. But don't don't say now in some to somebody Professor Alexander said that this is supposed to be called stone sorting. Nobody knows what it means. Okay. So there, there is this, there is this equivalent, and select sort is not exactly the same as bubble sort to start, starting from the left. Okay, the idea is a little bit different, but it's, it's similar, and the runtime is also similar. We saw that the runtime is quadratic, and then there was this, this insert sort, where, uh, <coughs> where the idea is that you, you, you sort again, let's say from, from the left. And uh, you you pick the, the first non-sorted element, and then you you try to insert this red element between the other so that it so that the the whole the whole thing is sorted. So now one was less than three five six. Uh, you have to insert it at the beginning. Eight is bigger than everything, so it doesn't need to move. Seven has to be inserted between six and eight. Two has to be inserted here, so now all these five elements have to move right. Okay. And this, what is uh, what is uh, in this uh, red square, okay, is what is summarized in the variable y. <laughs> okay, now if you do this uh, until until the end, you you have inserted correctly uh, all, all the elements. And now the the complexity of this algorithm depends somewhat on how well the the array is uh, is, is is sorted. So if you if you need to insert, if you need to move very few elements here in this loop in order to insert your Y correctly, then the complexity will decrease. So for example, if the area is sorted, okay, the complexity of this will be linear, simply not to do anything, to, to leave the area as it is, so you just to check that the area is sorted, okay? But, uh, but in general, I mean, if you, if you think of worst case complexity, again, the, the worst case complexity is quadratic. The worst, the worst case is when the area is sorted reversely, then every element has to be sorted in the beginning. So every time you have to move this whole area to the right and put the new element to the left. Okay. And uh, then you, you have again this, uh, this quadratic, uh, this quadratic running time problem. So the, the insert sort is in average slightly better than, than uh, bubble sort or select sort. But the worst case complexity is the same. Okay, so uh, uh, this is not not a, a, a great improvement over over the, the, the last the last two hours. And to to change this, okay, to to <clears throat> to change this, we were talking about the the merge sort as an algorithm now which applies a uh, Somewhat different, uh, quite quite different strategy. Uh, this of divide and conquer. So the idea of of the merge sort is to to use the capacity, its own capacity, on pieces of the array, and then to recombine. So we split. If the array is short, we don't do we don't do anything, and then we split. The, the array uh, 
into two pieces of approximately equal length, plus minus one. I mean, if any is even, then one will have one element fewer than the other, but okay. So, and we copy the first half of x into y, the second half of x into z, and then we use the procedure recursively. So we sort y and z, and then you, you have the following problem. I mean, I, I said it again, and this is important, so we'll come to it in the next uh, algorithm. Of course, if, if every element in Y is less than equal to every element in Z, then when you sort Y and Z, then you just need to copy Z to the right of Y and then you have a sorted error. But when, when you take the first half of, uh, of X and the second half of X, there is no way of knowing that some element on the left is bigger than some element on the right. This will generally happen. So you cannot simply you cannot simply uh, attach the area z to the to the area y. You need to do some kind of recombination procedure. So I said that this this piece here. So this is this is what is this is what is the the real merging where where okay the where the name of this algorithm comes from. Okay. So I have I have two pieces which are so something like this. So, I have two pieces, with, so this is sorted, okay, and this is sorted. And what I want is I want to copy this into a whole area which is sorted. Okay. And this is what the merging does. So now, uh, how does uh, how does uh, how does does uh, uh, how uh, does to do that? There is this uh, there was this animation, okay. and the idea is <coughs> so you split. You split this, uh, this, uh, this uh, always into half. Then you sort recursively this this half. In this case, okay, now we are at areas of one element where there is not too much to do in sorting. And then there comes this recombination. It, uh, so the way that it is done in the animation is it recombines from left to right. So what what he does is he always looks at the first element on uh, of the first half and the first element on the second half and compares and takes down the smaller one one with five gives one three with five gives three five and six okay now similarly here seven with two if you take the two seven with four now there is a four here which you don't see seven and then seven and eight and okay, now the the the, the 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 most instructive step is the last step so one with two take one two with three take two Three with four take three, four with five take four, five with seven take five, six with seven take six, and then take the other element seven and eight. Okay, so you have this you have this recombination uh, procedure which I uh, okay I, I I drew I drew here uh, in some. So this is this is what this recombining does, and this is why or, or merging. And this is why this is called uh, this is called merge stuff. And now uh, we, uh, for example, something that uh, something that you see again about the question left and right. To return to that, that in the code that it is written here, actually the recombination is done from the right. Okay, so you you copy the the rightmost element and decrease the right end of the array. Uh, okay, but it is equivalent. So <laughs> whether you do it the one way or the other, uh, it's, it's it's essentially the same. So. Uh, okay, so you have uh, this was this was the 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 idea, and now uh, we we calculated using using master theorem if you want. Okay, that uh, the the co uh, the complexity of this is uh, all of n times log of n, where the the all of n so this piece here comes from merging and from copying. And two times t and half comes from these two recursive calls. Okay, and then the the master theorem gives you complexity n times log of n. Okay, so uh, so now how about the memory? And there were some there were some questions in the chat about that. And uh, there there are some uh, okay they're, they're kind of justified. So maybe let let me first say just one word. Okay, if you do this parallel, 
Okay, and this is what is a little bit indicated here. Like, see, this splitting is done everywhere at the same time. If you do this parallelly, you would need the memory for y, for disco and for disco at the same time, and then every element is copied as many times as you need to to get down to size one, which is uh, which is so since you divide the arrays into into halves, the 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 depth recursion of uh, the recursion depth of this uh, recursive cost will be log of n. Okay, so this the, this recursive cost will go on to the depth of log of n. And since every element has to be copied log of n times, you need a memory of n times log of n. This is definitely needed if you want to process everything uh, in parallel, but then of course the runtime would improve. Uh, but then I said, okay, now uh, if you're on an ordinary computer, you do not need to run this recursive course parallel. So you run first this and then that. And then uh, I said that the, the memory the, the memory for for uh, for uh, for the call of y is not needed when you run z, and similarly the mem the memory for the, for the call of z is not yet needed when you run y. <laughs> now, there, of course, there was then some uh, questions in the chat. Of course, you need to store the area y until you recombine. That is certainly true. Okay, because you. you uh, but the the memory of which is allocated in recursive calls, which are made by this by this call, is no longer needed when y is correct, is correctly stored. And similarly, the, the memory for the recursive call of this procedure is not yet needed before you before you sort it. Okay. So and then and then uh, when you are allowed to uh, to reuse memory. To, to use the same memory for different recursive calls, then you can reduce the memory consumption. <laughs> and this is what I uh, this is what I try to indicate by uh, by uh, <laughs> by, uh, by by what I said last time. So <laughs> you do not if you if you do this sequentially, you can and you can reduce memory. You can uh, you can uh, reduce this memory consumption. <laughs> so this means, <laughs> and now uh, the, okay, there there are there are two ways uh, of doing this. I mean, um, <clears throat> so uh, there there was also this question: Why do we need the extra memory? Yeah. So you see, what, what the, the 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 main disadvantage of this procedure, as I tried to explain last time, was that you always need some kind of copying, and the reason is this recombination, you, this recombination of of uh, of y and z of two sorted arrays to give one sorted array. You, there is no way to of efficiently doing it without allocating extra memory. I mean, that's the problem. So <laughs> yeah, so you you. You always have to, you always have to allocate an extra. Now, there, there was this, uh, there was this idea. I mean, I think somebody asked me this. This was one of the questions in the chat. Uh, what you can do, of course, is if you want to save memory, what you can do is you can do the following. Okay, you can try to. <laughs> let's say you can try to save this copying. Okay, you can try to save this copying, and you try to sort on the on 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 pieces of x itself. So instead of instead of copying here into y, you can say merge sort x one to one to one to l, no, and merge sort x l plus one n plus one to n. Okay, so uh, there is there is nothing wrong with that. You can, uh, okay, you can, you can do this. So you can, instead of creating this extra edit, you can try to save the memory, but by calling merge sort recursively here and here. Okay, and then, uh, so what, what you will get is, at the end is, you will get a sorted area here, and you will get a sorted area here. Right? And then the problem is you want to get this <laughs> to, a, to a complete sorted area. Okay, uh, but uh, you want to do this 
uh, in in so fast okay and without copying and that's the problem <laughs> so th this is this is the reason why you need the copying because this recombination cannot be done efficiently even if you have pieces of the array co correctly sorted okay, this recombination cannot be done with extramary what you what you can do is of course you can sort first here and then copy okay then you make a copy of these two pieces and then you recombine this is this is perfectly fine <laughs> and uh, okay th this will not this will not resolve. This will not resolve the the copying problem. Okay, this problem is uh, intrinsic to this to this merge sort algorithm. This copying problem. But uh, for example, what you what what this does is that it saves memory because in that case only the recombination acquires extra memory. This means that uh, when you make recursive calls and there there is only one recombination procedure active at most at any time because the recombination procedure doesn't make any recursive call this means that there is only one segment of memory of extra memory allocated which is needed at a time and you easily see for example that with 2n okay with memory 2n you can already do it so, so it is uh, it, it is uh, it, it is a, a so this the way of doing it this way it will economize you memory uh, but it will, it can still not avoid this copying process. You cannot recombine two sorted pieces of an array uh, without efficiently without without uh, without making a copy. Okay, that's the problem. <laughs> I mean, you can you you can do this by doing bubble sort. Okay, so then you get, you have gained nothing from this whole idea. So so you want to do this fast. You want to do this in linear time. In order this to, to, to be true, you need to, to make this recombination in linear time. And for this, you always need this extra copy. Okay, so this, this was the, the, the problem of, uh, of the merge stop. And then uh, now I, I come to, uh, I think that I mostly answered the questions which were, uh, which were in the chat last time. So uh, this is uh, <coughs> what I was, forgot to say or what I should have said maybe a little bit in more detail last time. So now I come to the idea of of quick sort. And the idea of quick sort is you is basically that you want to avoid this copy. And the way to avoid this copying is you want to to uh, split the array in such a way that everything on the left is less than equal to everything on the right. Okay, so this is this is the the the, the kind of guideline for for this quick stop. So you you want to copy this uh, in such a way that when you when you call this recursively, okay, on on X itself, uh, you are already done. You do not need a recombination. There is no recombination needed. So, but you need to do something. Okay, and uh, uh, so this can be achieved, but th there is a complication. So, so what, what, uh, what, what do you do? And um, for for technical reasons, I will introduce two extra parameters to this quick sort, which is L and R, which means that this procedure should sort only elements from X from X L to X R. Okay. This is important because uh, you need to call quick sort recursively on some pieces of the area, and then you need to change this L and R. Okay, so <coughs> the first line you should be clear: if L is big equal to R, then there is at most one element in the area, so there is nothing to done to be done. And now there uh, there comes this. Uh, let's see <coughs> this choice of a pivot element. Okay, now uh, last semester I was discussing that the word pivot, if you write it without p, uh, in the Czech Republic has some uh, has some very different meaning. When you go to Prague or to, okay, and you ask you ask for pivot, then you will get some, a certain alcoholic drink. Where I don't know if you are in the legal age of consuming, but you shouldn't uh, over consume. But since we are a little bit behind time, I don't want to discuss that meaning of pivot. So for now, pivot uh, for us pivot is the a reference element in this area 
Okay, so F will be set to some element uh, uh, in this array X bracket. And it will be, we'll need some discussion about the choice of this element. So for now, just remember that F is some element in this array. Okay. Uh, and then you, you, you run this loop. Uh, <clears throat> basically what you want to achieve at the end so let me try to draw it and then <laughs> so what you want to what you want to achieve at the end is that you have a division of of my array with with a and b here will be the element s here will be elements less than s and here will be the elements bigger than s. okay this is what you uh, what you what you're trying to achieve so you want to to uh, this is not a full sorting but it is like a prearrangement of this area, X, uh, where, where this reference element, everything which is left of the reference element is less, everything which is right of the reference element is bigger, and you know the, posi the new position of this element. Okay, so this element will move somewhere in the area and you, you, need, you need the position and uh, this is what uh, will be achieved with, uh, with, uh, by this variable A and B, which will be equal at the end. So now how do you do this? You put a to the to the left, okay. You put uh, b to to the right, uh, and uh, <coughs> you go you go from the left as long as as the elements are less uh, are, are smaller than that. So you go from here until you find an element which is bigger or equal, and similarly. <coughs> You go from the right as long as you encounter elements bigger equal to so actually there should be here bigger equal if you assume that there are elements several elements equal to s then uh, we should do that way okay but it is a, only a technical a minor technical point so and now when when you when you are i exit both of these loops then two other two things happen either a is equal to b Okay, and then you would know that everything on the right is bigger than s, and, and everything on the left is smaller than s, and then you are here. Or you found an element on the left which is bigger than s, and an element on the right which is less than uh, less than or equal to s. And if that happens, then you swap. Okay, I mean, uh, of course, if a is equal to b, then this will do nothing. Uh, this will do nothing. So you need you can swap also when a is equal to b, and then exit the loop. But uh, important is that whenever you find an element here which is bigger than s, and here which is less than or less than s, then you simply swap them. Okay, and then the big element lands on the left, and the small element, uh, the, the the big element lands on the right, and the small element lands on the lands on the left. Okay? And then uh, once you you are you are uh, you have swapped this, then you continue doing it until uh, again until a is equal to b, and when you then you arrive at this uh, at this uh, situation. So and the, uh, the so this can be done. Uh, this this will give you now a division, okay, of of this area uh, where you have you have the position a of the element s. So obviously s is s must be in the middle because everything here is bigger equal to s and everything here is less than s. Okay. So s uh, now at the end x a will be equal to s. Yeah. <coughs> So, and now once you have this, then you have this division of arrays where everything on the left is less than equal to everything on the right. And then you can simply, you can simply call quick start recursively on this piece and on this piece. And uh, uh, I mean, maybe just remark, since you know that x a is equal to s, you do not need to sort s itself. This is why here it is uh, here here means the, the right boundary, the right boundary of of the left piece is set not to a but to a minus one. A is equal to b. Okay. Uh, so uh, you must you must be careful. I mean, uh, okay, uh, you must be careful that the 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 size of this area decreases under both calls. 
So actually, actually, it would be better here to write B plus one. Yeah, because because a because s a is equal to b and s is equal to s is equal to x a okay and the reason you need this uh, decrease of of length is that in case a is equal to zero or a a is equal to one or a is equal to n you may you have you will replace a call of quick sort over the area x with a call of quick start over the same area. And then you get an infinite recursion. This is something that you have to avoid. So you have to ascertain that the size of the area decreases under recursive call. Okay? And then you can do this. Okay? So the, then, then the idea works. So and now uh, the the so what is what is the 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 problem with with that. So now let me let me erase this this drawing, which is not okay, it's not not the best. But. So what is the uh, what is the 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 complexity? Ah, ah yes. Okay. Now uh, let me return to to the issue of choosing the pivot element. So. Uh, <laughs> How do we choose the pivot? And that is a, that is a very good question. So you, as you see in this problem that I have indicated here, um, okay, as you see in the problem which I have indicated here, it is possible that one of these, if you do not write this minus one or plus one, it is possible that this uh, that a is very large or b is very small. Okay, uh, and this is this is one one important problem uh, in this uh, in this setting. So, <coughs> whenever you choose a pivot element, you have no way of knowing a priori. Uh, where this where this a and b will land so this a and b will will land somewhere between l and r but you have no idea where this will be okay so this can be this can be anywhere and the problem occurs when this is very far to the left or very far to the right so and so now what 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 you can do is of course you can you can try to choose several pivot elements and depending on the choice of the pivot element, you will get different values of a and b. Okay, so you can you can uh, <laughs> you can choose the middle element. Okay, if you want. But for example, if we if when we talked about searching, then you saw that this is very essential that you choose the middle element in a sorted array because you can uh, accelerate the search process. But the problem here is that the array, when you start at the beginning, the array is not sorted, and this uh, this choice cho choice of middle element doesn't say anything about its size. Okay, the middle element can be the largest or the smallest, in which case you will get you will get very disbalanced division between a and a and b. So a and b can be there is no way of knowing. You can choose you can choose left element, you can choose right element. Okay, <laughs> depending on your choice, a will a and a and b will move left or right, but you have no way of knowing uh, in advance how how large they will be. Okay, so and in no okay so <laughs> the 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 worst thing that can happen is when this is very disbalanced. Let's say when the left area has n capital n minus one element and the right area has one element. Okay. Now, this, if you if you estimate complexity, you will see it is very easy to see that this is all of n. Okay, so this uh, re reorganization of the, the finding of this element a uh, of this of this division, uh, the the calculation of this a and having everything small on the left and everything larger on the right will cost you all of n. So this is not not too bad, but the problem comes from here. Okay. And in the worst case, when you have this, uh, when you have this, this recursion, you immediately see that this is quadratic. 
okay so so if if you cannot control how far this a this division a and b goes to the left and to the right uh, in the worst case you will have quadratic complexity okay and uh, so this means this this idea if you use the idea for itself the worst case complexity of the quicksort is actually as bad as this of the of the bubble top okay so and i think this is okay here you go here you go okay so quicksort is in the worst case as bad as the bubble top <laughs> it's just quadratic complexity so uh, when you do it this way so again to 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 make this clear so we we achieve that everything on the left is less than everything on the right but we have this balancing problem which in the worst case gives you this very bad complexity okay all of n squared okay now uh, <laughs> so why am i doing it i mean you know you can... <laughs> so why why am i why am i doing it? Uh, To, to make this better, okay, let us make a, a related uh, analysis. Okay, so uh, the problem will persist whenever uh, whenever you you have when you can have a and b uh, a bounded number from the left and from the right. So if you can avoid it, this is the the division is the the first element, but if it's always the second, then you have a similar problem. So as long as as long as this is so bad that you have here a constant thing with constant in n, then you always have this problem. So so <laughs> and now what what can you do about it? Uh, and uh, for this we need to revise uh, our estimates a little. Bit. Now <clears throat> assume that assume that. Uh, we can achieve that <laughs> this piece okay is bigger rig of epsilon times n and this piece is as well where epsilon okay is is between zero and one and is fixed so this doesn't depend on this doesn't depend on n in general epsilon will be a small number but assume that you can do that so assume that there is a way for you to choose the pivot element so that you can have here at least epsilon times n on the left and at least epsilon times n on the right and now okay now uh, for the purpose of let me write this properly <laughs> so assume that you can do that assume that you can you can put here an epsilon and then you get uh, you get a recursion which is uh, of the following sort now this uh, you you get here and you get here an epsilon and here you get an one minus epsilon so this means that the complexity of this recursive course is like that it, it is not very precise in the sense that you have to this is now in the case that it is exactly epsilon but uh, it is very easy to see that if it is further to the center, then the, the complexity will decrease. So the worst complexity came when when this is when this one of these distances is the smallest. And in the, in this case, we assume that this is exactly epsilon. This is why you write now here n times epsilon. And for the other for the other part, you write n times one minus epsilon. Okay. So assume uh, assume uh, assume that we can we can divide like that. Then we get an estimate of this sort. Now let's see. Okay. So here we go. So now you can replace uh i can erase my ugly epsilon for the nice epsilon of the slide so we have now we have now this, this epsilon in this way okay. uh, and here what stands here is so what what stands what stands here is now essentially this assumption okay that the 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 this division a and b is at least an epsilon away from either side so and then I claim that in this case you get the 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 the, the merge sort complexity n times log of n, which is of course better than n squared. So once you can find an epsilon of this sort, so that you can always choose the pivot element uh, with an epsilon away from 
from, from the edge, then you have complexity n times log of n. And now, uh, what is the proof? Okay, uh, you cannot prove it with a master theorem directly. Okay, you cannot prove this with a master theorem directly because uh, in the master theorem, there is only one instance of t on the right hand side. So now you have two, you have two call two values of the function t on the right and the arguments are not the same. This way you cannot use master theorem, but nevertheless, you can you can prove this by making an uh, by making so this is this calculation here by making an answer so the answer is a, a German word which is very much used in English as well and answer means that you assume somehow that the solution is of a particular type and then you prove you prove that this is correct by for example in this case finding finding the constant t. Obviously, obviously, when we can find a constant t which does not depend on capital n such that this is less than equal to c times n times log of n, then this is all of n times log of n. So the question is, how do you find the constant? And you find this by uh, okay by by um, <coughs> expanding. Uh, and uh, I mean now now you need to okay you need to do a little bit of calculus. So uh, I mean I don't know probably most of you. Uh, hate mathematics even more than than other things, but uh, you cannot do without mathematics. So, uh, what is what is being done here? Uh, I simply put put in this uh, this. Uh, I assume that C of n is of this form, and then I put this form for C of n times epsilon C of n times one minus epsilon here. And there is also this. Uh, I'm sloppy. You see here I have written all of n. Okay, now I have uh, immediately replaced this just by n. And the answer is when it is all of n, this is some constant. And then uh, basically if you have another constant, then you have to multiply c with this extra constant. So it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, I can simply set the constant to one and I can replace all of n by n. Okay, and now when you when you put this, this whole thing together, uh, then you get then you get that. Which is what you want to uh, uh, to to, uh, to get from. So you want to put the form of this recursive call, uh, and you want to get the same form there. And now you get the form, uh, but you get this extra. Now let's see. I, I mean, I can use different colors. So let's say I can use this. Here now. <laughs> you get this extra term, uh, and uh, this is why I say you need to do your calculus. So now uh, let's see whether. What, can I write here? Oh yeah, great. Okay, so now I use the the margins of the of the screen for 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 the calculation. So uh, what you need to prove is what you need to prove is that what you need to prove is that this thing is let's say I can use other colors as well. So what you need to prove is that this is less less than uh, Less than um, less than zero. Okay, less than equal to zero. Once you get that this is less than equal to zero, you get here less than or equal, and then it is enough. So now, uh, what is what is this? Um, so <laughs> let me consider this p. Okay. So and now I I call this star doing parenthesis. So now uh, your your if you know calculus, you will know that star is less than zero first. Okay, star is negative uh, because epsilon and one minus epsilon are positive, but epsilon is between zero and one. So the log of numbers between zero and one is negative. So this is positive times negative plus positive times negative. So this is negative. Okay, so <clears throat> so uh, and once uh, once this number is negative, this means so then you find find c bigger than zero so that c times c times star uh, is <laughs> less than minus one okay so when you have a negative number i can multiply it with a constant so it becomes less than minus one and then uh, and then you have c times this number plus one is less than uh, less than uh, less than zero and then this whole thing becomes zero so then you get 
Okay, so then you get this whole thing is less than equal to <laughs> less than equal to here. Okay, <laughs> and uh, this is how you prove this is how you prove uh, this estimate. So so by uh, by by um, by okay knowing knowing your 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 calculus you can you can prove this. Uh, you can prove this uh, estimate, but uh, <coughs> what happens so now? Uh, but uh, now let me add a remark. So uh, this this gives you a proof that uh, that whenever you can fix epsilon, uh, you get uh, you get this logarithmic complexity. Now what happens when epsilon goes to zero? Now now. Uh, <coughs> So what happens when epsilon goes to zero? And this is also something that you should know. So when epsilon goes to zero, this goes to one and this goes to log of one. Log of one is zero and so one times zero is zero. So this goes to zero. And then you should know from your calculus and when epsilon goes to zero, epsilon times log of epsilon also goes to zero. So from here you have that star. Okay, so this, this also goes to zero. And uh, this is the problem. That we have encountered before. What does this mean? So when 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 star goes to zero, uh, and you want to have c times star less than minus one, this means that this constant c will go to infinity. Okay. You have to choose larger and larger constant, which is uh, very much, I mean, in in accordance with our previous observation that uh, as as, as as soon as our element goes further to the left or further to the right, the complexity uh, estimate deteriorates. And finally, when epsilon goes to zero, then this constant goes to infinity and this, uh, this estimate breaks down. Okay, so I mean, from your calculus class, you can see that when there is no epsilon of this sort, then uh, this estimate breaks down. And uh, you have seen before that it's actually the, the, the you, you land in the worst case scenario of the, of the, of the quick start, which is the quadratic one. <laughs> but now, okay, now let me, let me erase here. So I can, I, I should, I should see now. <laughs> So now remember this important point. <laughs> so we have seen that as long as I can choose my uh, my my pivot element, so that uh, <clears throat> I can uh, as, uh, achieve this epsilon, uh, I can I can improve this this worst case complexity. Okay. But the problem is you do not know how to do that yet. I mean, uh, as I said, uh, when, whenever you fix a pivot, whether this is whether this is the, the middle element or in fact you can you can do this random. Okay, so you can choose a random number between L and R, uh, and uh, you can choose S to be this random element between L and R. Right? This is fine, but there is no way of uh, no way of producing this epsilon. I mean, <laughs> this. This, uh, this choice of uh, this random choice of elements will not guarantee you this epsilon. So this means, uh, I mean, th I think it is explained also in the book. Uh, so, <coughs> so in, uh, in uh, <coughs> I will show you the book when I when I finish the lecture. So. Uh, the, the 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 you can you can have a perhaps a better average case complexity, okay, but the, the worst case complexity remains the same. So you need to ascertain this epsilon, or or it is very helpful to ascertain this epsilon. And this is what I mean. I do not have too much time now, so I don't want to start with this because it is an extremely technical and long topic. And I will get into this into a very into into very detail the next time 
but uh, the the idea of uh, <coughs> of this fixed to the quick sort algorithm, so a finding an element which is at least an epsilon from the left and from the right away for, from from the from the smallest or largest entry is by using this by using a an a revised modified median algorithm which is uh, which is called the the median of five median so we will discuss this next time i do not want to to overstress this because uh, it is a very long discussion for itself but th there is a way there is indeed a way okay there is a way to to create an element to create a to find a pivot element which which has a positive epsilon in, in fact in 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 this case epsilon will, in this case epsilon will be 0 0.3 okay, we will prove that epsilon is 0 0.3 uh, and you can and so that i mean so that this is of course efficient so this is linear time if finding if finding the finding such a such a good pivot element is more costly than linear then of course it will deteriorate either but when it is linear then you can i can put the effort of doing it into this of often and then this recursion works so this means by adding to the quick sort the algorithm of finding a good median element we will be able to get the quick sort to work with some positive epsilon. For example, epsilon is 0, 0 0.3, and then uh, you, you will have this, this good complexity. And uh, so we will discuss. I don't want to start this now because it is okay, too late and uh, you're tired anyway. So I will discuss this, um, this, uh, <laughs> this story uh, in detail the next time. Okay, now I get, I get out of. Uh, I get out of my um, screen. Wait, you can. So if you can see me, I mean this book. Okay. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so this is this is this book uh, about uh, <coughs> about algorithms and uh, and what you will find in this book. Okay, I mean uh, the lecture is not not a copy of the book so it shouldn't be so what you will find in this book is you will find a discussion of the quick sort with an average case analysis and worst case analysis and the explanation why the worst case is quadratic but i did not find this uh, this median time uh, modification uh, in the book so this is uh, okay we will have to discuss this in detail next time okay so <clears throat> and uh, I think now my time is over, so let let me let me finish here. Uh, <coughs> questions in the chat: Is k the count of output? Yes. And uh, okay, uh, uh, can you explain why c goes to infinity one more time? No. Uh, I, okay, maybe I will do this one more time the next time. But basically, this is calculus. Okay. I mean, so uh, so first. First hint for you: uh, simply look into your calculus textbook. Okay, and I do not want to do mathematics too much in a in a complexity class, but we will need this from time to time. And uh, next time we will need to do some more mathematics. Okay, so uh, uh, <coughs> okay, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, okay. So you're welcome, and then uh, <coughs> see you on Thursday. Okay, five thirty.